And they announced that next would be Zelina Vega and BFAB. I was like, oh boy. Uh, but it never starts because before the bell rings, Sarah Logan appears at the entrance announcing Valhalla is here. And the Viking Raiders storm the ring, attacking both Legato del Fantasma and Hit Row, laying out Ashanti with a splash. And then they double team Top Dalla, which <laughs> they had to try very hard to explain uh, that they were going to deliver Valhalla to Top Dalla, which I hope is a <laughs> freestyle uh in the future from Hit Row. And uh, Logan is identified as Sarah Logan and does a pop-up headbutt onto B-Fab. She's got a new look here, as you can see on the screen, and then they pose at the end. So I, I thought this was a nice reintroduction of them. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, they're, they're a great team that this, uh, the whole Viking motif has kind of been, you know, a struggle for them in WWE because it hasn't been elsewhere, but getting yeah. a, a refresh here and with the addition of Sarah Logan, who is back. I thought it was a tremendous re- reintroduction for Sarah Logan, who I, I feel like all of a sudden, you know, feels like the star of this sort of group. Um, like the video packages have really been tremendous and she has sounded, she has looked really cool. And I thought the look that re- she redebuted with here, like is pretty awesome. It's it's really creepy looking, and, and I think total a total reinvention. I think of of what she was before. The big question, though, is um, attached to the Viking Raiders, who have to me been more comedic than threatening up until this point. Can this act survive beyond the cool video packages? You know, in ring, we know that they could be serious, but they've also started with these guys so often, restarted with these guys so often that it's just, I found it hard the moment that they hit the ring to start to take them seriously again, because I'm just reminded so much of the bowling and, and I don't know, all that fucking sh- shit the chicken legs and and stuff, you know? So I th- you avoid all that. Like this is not a look and a reintroduction where I would be. Is this, an, in- is this enough of a reinvention of the two of the, the, you know, the Viking Raiders though, to make you forget about that? I think they have a clean slate here with, if they really have a, a plan here, I like this reintroduction. I think Logan adds a lot here. I think it's a cool look. And I like, like I- Ivar and Eric, like they're, they're a great team together. And it was just, all the other personality stuff that just was a killer for those two. So uh, hopefully it's a fresh start for them. It's um, because they they, they need tag teams badly. Like they don't need to be wasting time. If a team is just going to be squandered and have another uh, sideshow comedy act, they, they have like those players and they don't need any more. And, and, you know, the difference this time around is that they, they're under a, a new creative um, sort of direction or director, I should say. And, Who were and, handled and, a, w- a way better in NXT. Mm-hmm. I also dug the uh, the Viking Raiders' return and, uh, of course, Sarah Logan's new look. I mean, I know a lot of people, I know Wrestling Twitter is going to go crazy with the whole she stole my look with uh, her new look because I feel like a lot of people are going to, like, you know, say, hey, we're going to say, like, she stole from uh, Maxine Paler, mm-hmm. who's uh, – Who's, who has a similar look with the whole, you know, Norse aesthetic. And, but actually, like, Sarah's new look is, um, is inspired from this video game called Hellblade, Sinuous Sacrifice, where it follows this Norse woman who has to, who has to like, you know, scatter her, her dead lover's ashes before Ragnarok occurs. So I think it's more in line with that than Maxine Paler. What was the name of that again, Muggin? So just so uh, I could bring that up on screen. Uh, Hellblade, Sinuous Sacrifice. All right. Sen- Senua's sacrifice. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so this is this is certainly uh, become incredibly controversial. Now I'm not familiar with uh, the game, but uh, a lot of people online are uh, really pointing to Sarah Logan and her similarities to Max the Impaler's look. Um, so this is the video game Muggin was referring to, and could it be? that they were both taken after the game here. Um, there's definitely a similarity. What do you think, John? I mean, it was pretty striking when you put up the, the side-by-sides there. Here. Look at this. I mean, there is going oh to be God. that natural comparison. I mean, that looks, uh, it does look pretty similar. Um, mm-hmm. and, but here's the thing. Hellblade came out in 2017, and I don't know when Maxine Paler started wrestling. So, I mean, I don't know when that happened, but I, I feel like, I feel like the Sinua character predates Maxine Paler and, of course, Sarah Logan's new look. 
I'll be completely honest. This whole Max the Impaler story, like, completely didn't cross my, my radar. I'm not familiar with Max the Impaler's work on the independent wrestling scene. So when I watched this, I just thought, cool, look. Little did I know. You're, you're going to have to watch Hard Times 3 tomorrow night, way. How exact this yeah. looks like. Yeah, um, I, 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 I certainly like uh, I did not make the, the connection either. But seeing them like I can obviously see where where people can see the um, uh, the, the comparisons because it's, it's pretty glaring when you have uh, these side by side shots it, and seeing some of the that the immediate reaction just scrolling through right now in the midst of uh, uh, us doing this segment. Uh, but the Internet is certainly picked up on it and the inter- inter- Internet is certainly outraged. But I'm so glad Muggin called in with his point about. Um, the potential influence for the both of them in this Hellblade Senua sacrifice possible character. So if that is the case, then um, should there still be that gripe? Um, you can make the argument that, hey, like Max the Impaler was the first person to adopt this in a professional wrestling setting. And therefore, she does have some sort of stake, some sort of claim to having this look and wwe should be rightfully criticized um but there is at least some ambiguity potentially um i looked up her cage match she wrestled uh beginning in 2019 and muggin at least tells us that that game debuted in 2017 so um it is certainly interesting and i certainly expect do you expect some tweaking of this by the time we see sarah Logan next week john uh, I think it would have to be a pretty resounding uh, vocal protest to this for them to tweak anything. I would. Uh, I think it's going to get there. Like looking at the side by side, you know, for a WWE like Fox affiliated, you know, gimmick to, to, to like this is very carbon. Like the side by side is very damning. You it, know? It's actually some positive attention on Max the Impaler who. Oh, yeah. In, yeah. in a roundabout way gets uh, some attention uh, out of this 